Cuberto's he's 10, 11, 12 games into an eight year deal at, at 10 and a half. Like it's, and he's getting benched and that would have been an organizational conversation. Obviously Huska makes the call and he did so deserve, he, he deserved to be benched clearly as Huska said, he wasn't going, but the fact is he hasn't gone once since he arrived. <laughs> That's He's right. He's never been right. going. So I, I would assume that that would have been Conroy and company going in saying, if you see it, it's time to jab them. You know, it's time. Wow. We got to try something here. So if it's not going, you got to sit them. And what they're trying to do is spark them via embarrassment. His teammates are sticking up. I feel for the guy. No, I do too. But, but I heard something concerning last night when Ryan Huska was asked, how did he take it? And he said, oh, he's fine. He'll be, he'll have a, and then his teammates were like, he'll be at the rink with a smile on my face. Yeah. And I remember when my, my, when my dad, I was playing junior and he used to see some healthy scratches wandering around, smiling and laughing with popcorn and junk food. (laughs) And he said, if I ever see you smiling and laughing, being a healthy scratched or not playing, I'll never come again. So it's like, how, how could, how could you say, oh, he's fine with it? Like he's wow. going to be at the like shouldn't you would be thinking? I remember our boy Chaser. Chaser came off the ice. Kelly Chase in Hartford and Paul Maurice told him he was a healthy scratch. The big screen TV that we watched video on was in half in the front of the locker room because <laughs> that's how Chaser. That's how mad and disappointed that he was that he wasn't playing. Wow. And I'm not obviously recommending that, but just to say, like, oh, he's fine. He's, he's, he's okay. He understands. It's just like I, I think that was media speak. If you if you're asking me, like, we, you know, those guys, all three of those guys who spoke. But noodles, last night, wouldn't you think the coach would say, you know what, he was pretty pissed off, instead yeah. of he's fine? But yeah, I don't know. Why would that be media speak? Like, why would they all be on the same page saying, let's go out and talk about how happy he's going to be? Well, I, I think it's more like you're sitting there going. Well, if you say, oh, he's pissed off and it's disruptive, now all of a sudden you're like, okay, this guy's a cancer in the room, all of that. Mm. You, you know what? You just you, But you I thought it would have crept to really you, disappointed. Disruptive po- is your own word. I, I'm not saying they should have added disruptive, but I think I'm with O on this. Like, hey, I'm sure he's not happy. That sucks. But I'll bet you he comes out pissed tomorrow and crushes. Even, even if the know, coach said, like I would sure hope that he's not happy. Yeah. Because well, like, to say that different. he's going to come to the rink with a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. I, look, I didn't look at it that way. I just looked at it as yeah. like, this is the first time. And I like good for Ryan Huska. Like, this is the one thing. And I got this from you, O, is is. These coaches have nothing to take away from the player. Not taking money away from the players. Nothing. The, you know, they've, they've got stardom. They've got all these things. He's got one card to play, ice That's time. It. And he took That's it. That's it. It's and it. and good, good for him because yes. there's other coaches yeah. that should have done that. And think about this. If Daryl Sutter did that, could you imagine big, bad Daryl Sutter? If he did that, there'd be tweets. The agent would be going nuts. Like All of this stuff. Well, where, you know... The player has to accept responsibility. That's the way I look at it. And and Ryan Huska, what he did is he he sent a message to the player. That's not good enough. I'm trying to win games here. And it was a big move. They were down 2-1. Yeah. And he sat them down. And they ended up winning the game. It, it is. Out. I would like to know why last night was the night. Like, again, that's where I'm getting in. I'm I'm curious about the politics behind the scenes. You know, like you guys know the way it works in pro sports now. Like coaches, the management's heavily involved. I'm not saying they called down and said sit them. That was Husky's right. call, clearly. But it can get it can get political behind the scenes. There, actually, there's a, an interesting quote coming out of New York. I saw Robert Sala was doing an interview with uh, I think Michael K. Show, and he was asked specifically about why you keep why they keep playing Zach Wilson. Like, why are you playing him? Because they they have a veteran behind him. And he basically said, I have to plead the fifth. I don't know. I can't get into it. Which was basically his way of saying, the GM and the owner won't let me not play him. <laughs> yeah, that's basically that's it. Like, the owner has said, no, he went second overall. We're paying him. You're playing him. And Salah's right. like, I don't want to lie about it. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say it's my decision because I don't want to own it. But that's modern sports. His management has a huge role in this. And... I just I'm I find that t- somewhat fascinating that clearly the Flames because we saw it basically every game last year like he had some good game but Huberto has been has been really a disappointment since he got there and he struggled yeah. mightily already this season what was it about last night where it was like that's when we're going to sit the guy 
He had to go up the chain and say, I, this, think so. I can't watch this anymore. And if he does it again, I want to sit his ass on the bench. And finally, somebody went to him and said, you got you to do it. Do it. I, you have to I, do it. I think it, either that or like my his last shift was two minutes and 45 seconds long. So I don't know if it was like he got caught out there. I didn't go back and look at it. <laughs> I hope like, so. That's, fine. Like, if not, finally, he, that's a Phil like Esposito you, shit. <laughs> it's basically you come and nail yourself to the bench here because that's yeah. not going on. I don't I don't know the context of it, but I just, you know, in watching these games, I had back-to-back games. So I'm like, okay, he's benched. Uh, let's go back and look at that last shift. It was 240. I'm like, oh, my God. Did he get trapped out and hung out in the zone? Like, like that's I would have been happy out. if I was the coach and he took a long shift. Maybe he wanted to stay out there and do something. Uh, like, I'm not benching a guy for taking a long shift, but I'm benching a guy for absolutely well, showing little well. heart yeah, rate. Yeah, not playing well. No, not playing it's well. not even close. It's, it. it's not even close. No, and, and, it, you, and that's what I wonder, guys. Like, We're at about 90 games of it with him in Calgary. Where's the breaking point where it's like, this is just no way. But what are they like, going to do? Yeah, like, what are you like Ed, do? Edmonton just hit the breaking point with Jack Campbell, right? Like, clearly that was a massive mistake. Ken Holland's got to own that. He gave him five years at $5 million. We're a year and 11 games in. A year and 11, and he's gone. He's on waivers. He's in the American Hockey League. I don't know what they end up doing with him. I don't know if they're going to eventually call him back up and hope he refines form. Or at the end of the year, they're just going to buy him out. But... What are you going to do with Jonathan Huberto? I other don't know. than other than buy him out, but you can't buy it's him out. You've been paying tra- it's for a years. Se- it's a seventeen trade where all of them chomp on some of his uh, salary, well, and he goes it, back it, to Florida as a five million dollar player. I, That's I the would, only thing I could think of. If I'm them, I mean, <clears throat> you sit him out, and then he starts Friday night against the Leafs. Like you, yeah, you, you need gotta, this guy. Like he's you got to play. You, you got to get him back. Like mm-hmm. that's the thing. You send a message, and the last thing you do, if you're a coach, is you're still developing a relationship. Keep in mind, they've only been under the same house. We'll call it like Husker was the assistant coach there. They have a relationship, but he's been the head coach for what twelve games. Mm-hmm. Like they, you know, this was Dude, a that's final like straw. moving in with someone noodles, and you realize after an hour they're a psychopath, and you want to leave. Like. That's well, how that well, in-house relationship. This, you got to make it work. The next but, game will say a lot about Huberto. It'll say a lot. Like you, you've been embarrassed now. You got benched. Your team came back to win the game. You know, like that's yeah. another thing on top. Like, oh. right? Like the athlete in you is like, all right, if you're gonna bench me, I hope this goes south. Because then it's like, at least I can say I wasn't what triggered the turnaround. Yeah. And you can look at and, the coach and say, good move, dumb dumb. Yeah, exactly. But now you got to be like, hey, that was actually a pretty good play not putting me on the ice because they came back and won. So, you know, he's not going anywhere. It's got to work. He's still got talent. He's still a good player. But it has been a disaster since he arrived in Calgary. Like, yeah. based on expectations, it's it's been a disaster.